Hey there, fellow NPC uh, portrayers. I'm Pruitt. This is Jim Davis. And today's show is just about making those NPCs that much more memorable. Have them coming back to not only your trash goblins, but all your other NPCs on WebDM. This week's episode is sponsored by Hero Forge. They're the masters of customizable miniatures. If you've never played with their online 3D character creator, you are missing out. They've got so many options, including new color printing. You can make your character exactly the way you want it, and they come out looking great. Go to HeroForge.com to start designing your custom miniatures. And check out their Black Friday deals live now through Monday 1130. All STL downloads are $3.99, where you use the code EPICLOOT to get $5 off any physical mini. Go to HeroForge.com now. Link in the description. Okay, Jim, since we're not all Matt Mercer, and we can't do insane and we don't have a wide array of elaborate voices that will surely stick in the players heads what are some of the ways that a, a dm can make an npc more memorable uh other than having a uh, being boisterous yeah so to speak yes yeah i got what you, i get what you're saying yeah i i think that there's some things that maybe dms think are going to make for a memorable npc that mm -hmm. the party won't. And I think that's where you get into the like, oh yeah, this completely random NPC my party latched yeah. onto. The trash goblin. The trash goblin. Things like that. Well, why was yeah. trash goblin? Because trash goblin was simple and evocative. Yeah. You're probably your other NPC was <laughs> complex and and overly detailed and you couldn't just t give me in five words who this NPC is in you know in less yeah. than five words. And so I think the key to making evocative, memorable NPCs is to think like the kind of random <laughs> NPCs you might come up with. Trash Goblin, you know, Asshole Noble, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Scheming Priest, whatever it is. Uh, I, I find that like a really just a, a less than not even five words. That's too many, but like three words, just a quick description that gives me an archetype to portray. That that's like where mm -hmm. I'm going to start with that. Um, yeah, sneaky priests. Yeah, whatever one. it is, you know, brash warriors or, or cowardly wizards or, you know, educated ogres, what, you know, whatever. Especially if they're incongruous, right? If, if yeah. there's just a little bit of like, that doesn't make sense. Or... Um, I would like to know more. I would like yeah. to know more. Like this, like what's up with this dwarf that's just like sitting here reading a bunch of, of stuff and not like being all gruff and viking-esque or whatever you know um <laughs> what what's up with this elf over here and in, in their uh you know pit fighting ring you know their bare knuckle brawl kind of thing. like just what is it about them um keeping it short keeping it memorable easier for the pcs to remember one to two distinctive quirks just whatever it is they twitch they smell you can sometimes just describe them you know, it's just a smelly whatever or, or, you know, fidgety or, you know, really calm. Um, but if you can portray it somehow, if you can embody it, if you can use gestures and mannerisms, then um, then bonus points. It'll, it'll sink in more. Um, and then the other one for me is like a look. What's their look? Not just appearance, but like if if they were, you know, if this was their like freeze frame when they're introduced in a movie and their name splashes across the screen like what colors does it have what feeling do i want to portray with them you yeah. know uh you know what are what's it like to be in their presence uh or what emotions might they evoke for, you know as a reaction to them um that goes into the look then maybe i give them a name i probably will eventually players aren't going to remember it it's going to be, it's going to yeah. be a short, memorable name. Really the other stuff, a concept, bold, easy to remember, simple, uh, really distinctive quirks that, that are easy to portray, memorable, and then just an evocative look like that is a, that's a, has a better likelihood of like sticking in the characters' minds or the players' minds than like a super detailed, overly introduced, overly described, um, uh, NPC. Mm -hmm. See, now I just want to make a trash goblin who's actually like 
like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a detective. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Trash goblin Everything investigator. Everything's in the trash. Trash goblin. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's in the trash. Everything's in the trash. People throw away all kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. And I get a free meal to boot. <laughs> like Trash Goblin Private Eye. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm Trash Goblin Private Eye. And that's the thing, right? Like a whole thing with DMs. Like, oh man, I can't believe that they liked this one that I came up with on the fly. But yeah, but because you came up with it on the fly, it was simple, evocative, relied on con- broad concepts and archetypes. It was probably a little bit incongruous. Like it mm-hmm. probably had a silly name or at the very least just like a quick descriptor like all of those things make for a memorable npc because it's quick it's short it's it's it seems like you know they want to interact with it right trash yeah. goblin is a goblin you want in your life <laughs> you know <laughs> You just don't want to shake his hand. You just don't want to shake his hand. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's those are my tips for that. You got any? You got any uh, any tips for like? Just I, I mean, you, you you pretty much covered oh. it because the the big thing that I find myself is uh, when you spend way too much time with your NPCs preparing them, you usually bog them down with so much lore and information oh, that you're yeah. trying to relay, and that is what turns PCs off. Yeah, is an info dump. They don't want to go to the info dump cutscene. They want to stumble upon something rooting around in the trash yeah like like you know just just they want the random they want to be surprised yeah. and so the the more you can do to to bring about that outcome mm-hmm. um which which is why now like for my last game that i've prepared like i prepared our like random archetypes and stuff but i haven't up, like applied them to a certain npc mm-hmm. So the bartender you meet might be gruff and whatever, or they might be understanding and, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, agreeable. Mm-hmm. It depends. When we get there, I'll roll to find out. Yeah, yeah. Surprising yourself as a uh, DM is important as well. Um, because I find that doing that allows me to be more, you know, engaging in my portrayal. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it has worked out for me. Yeah, So. yeah. I, I, I agree. I agree very much. Um my my last thought on it is like you can use archetypes. I think they're very they're very useful. Um, my personal preference is for like a two thirds alignment with the archetype and then one third out of alignment. You know, so mm. it's just something that seems a bit off. They're not that way. You can avoid like stereotypes and and you just like oh, it's the same elf, the same dwarf, the same hobbit. You know, yeah. over and over and over again, the same dragon. Um, by just having some of it, like most of it conforms to what you would expect, but enough of it doesn't that it keeps it fresh and interesting, which is really Mm -hmm. what most of this is about, engaging, fresh, and interesting.